So again, because the fee threshold that we sent on the child transaction was high enough, it actually allowed us to confirm that first transaction from the ledger to the cold card, even though that transaction never would have confirmed. If you guys have sent a Bitcoin transaction in the last two months, you've probably had the situation where you sent a Bitcoin transaction at a really low fee threshold, hoping to save a little bit of money. And then a bunch of crazy ordinal wizards came out of nowhere and increased the amount that we all had to pay for Bitcoin transactions for about two months now. And maybe some of those transactions that you sent back in May are still pending in the mempool. And you might be like, hey, I just wanted to pay my friends and now I have to pay a million dollars to get my Bitcoin transaction sent, but I don't actually know how to do that. Can someone please show me how I can bump the fee to get my transaction confirmed a little bit sooner? So there's actually two ways in Bitcoin to bump your fee. The first one is called replace by fee. And the second one is called child pays for parent. And in this video today, I'm gonna be doing a child pays for parent tutorial where I send Bitcoin with a really low fee from my Ledger Nano X over to my cold card Mark IV. And then without that Bitcoin ever being confirmed, I'm going to send that Bitcoin directly from the cold card Mark IV over to a blue wallet on my iPhone. And the transaction will get confirmed with this higher fee threshold, not with the fee threshold that we used on the Ledger Nano X to send the original transaction. So go down below and smash the like button for Bitcoin fees and let's level up your brains. All right, guys, so the first thing we're gonna do in this child pays for parent tutorial, I have my ledger live up here on the screen. And then I also have my Sparrow wallet here with my cold card Mark IV. So first let's go ahead and make a send here from our ledger Nano X, and we will enter the Bitcoin address here from our cold card Mark IV. We'll go ahead and click on receive and we'll copy this address back over to the ledger and we're gonna paste the address. And then down here, we'll go ahead and click on continue. And now instead of taking ledger's advice and selecting a fee that would definitely get our transaction confirmed, let's go ahead into advanced and send a fee for only two sats per byte. And we'll go ahead and send $10 of Bitcoin. So our network fees are gonna be very low because we decided to send for two sats per byte, which is too low to get included in the mempool. And just to prove that out, we can open up the mempool here and see that two sats per byte would take about 121 blocks to get confirmed, which 121 blocks times 10 minutes divided by hours is gonna be about 20 hours. And in my experience, I sent a transaction for two sats per byte back in May, and I'm recording this video now in July, and that transaction has still not been confirmed. So I don't think this two sats per byte transaction has any chance of being confirmed anytime soon. So back over in Ledger, we're going to again confirm the $10 and the two sats per byte, and we'll go ahead and click on continue and then continue again. We'll open up the Bitcoin wallet here on our physical Ledger device, and we'll just confirm the output for the address and the amount that we want. And we'll go ahead and click on approve and confirm transaction. And it actually turns out that Ledger here is not even going to let us send the transaction because it knows that the minimum fee of the mempool has not been met. It's actually really interesting. Let's go ahead and click on retry and see if that fixes anything. I, I tend to doubt it. It seems like Ledger actually just won't let you send Bitcoin for this low of a fee. So I've accepted that transaction again and let's see what happens. Not going to let us do it. So let's go ahead and click on retry and we will go back and see if we change this to something like four sats per byte, if that's going to let us send that transaction. So I've approved the four sats per byte and now it's saying that transaction was sent. So if we go back to the mempool, it looks like a four sats per byte transaction should take about a probably more than an hour, five sats per byte is looking like 74 minutes at this point. And then we can go ahead over to Sparrow and see if that unconfirmed transaction has shown up and it looks like it has here. So it's sitting unconfirmed in the mempool over here on our Sparrow wallet. And if we go ahead and right click on this and select view transaction, and then we copy this transaction ID into the mempool, we can see that we just now sent the transaction for about four sats per byte and that it won't arrive for several hours or more. So we have this unconfirmed transaction, it's not going to arrive for a really long time. How can we get this Bitcoin unstuck from our cold card wallet and into a mobile device that we also control like a blue wallet on our iPhones? So all we're going to do is right click on this unconfirmed transaction here in Sparrow Wallet. And the reason that I sent this transaction here to Sparrow Wallet instead of sending it to something like Ledger Live is that actually Sparrow Wallet and Electrum, the desktop app, are some of the only Bitcoin wallets that allow you to do replace by fee and child pays for parent. If I wanted to do this exact same process that I'm going to show you here in Ledger Live, it's actually not possible. I would have to instead reinitialize my ledger onto something like the Sparrow Wallet. So let's go ahead and right click on this address here and we'll click on Send Selected. So now I'm gonna go on my iPhone and look up Blue Wallet and we'll go ahead and take this mobile wallet and click on Receive. 
and we'll generate a receiving address to this mobile wallet. We'll paste that receiving address here in Sparrow and we'll label this child pays for parent. Let's say we want it to arrive in one block. So we've upped the sats per byte to nine sats per byte, which if we look at the mempool, nine sats per byte should get it confirmed in the next block in about 11 minutes. And so now we'll come down here to create transaction and we'll click on finalize transaction here for signing. So now we're gonna go ahead and save this transaction, this child pays for parent partially signed Bitcoin transaction onto an SD card. And then I'll transfer that SD card here onto my cold card mark four, and then I'll go ahead and sign the transaction. So I've got my cold card here, I'm going to click on ready to sign, and then I'm going to select the child pays for parent partially signed Bitcoin transaction, and I'm gonna go ahead and approve that transaction. So the transaction has been signed and it's showing me the output of the new file. So I'm gonna go ahead and approve that and then just remove the SD card and put it back here in my computer. So now if we open up a new finder window, we can click here on our SD card and we can see the signed child pays for parent partially signed Bitcoin transaction. We can load that transaction into Sparrow and we'll just go ahead and drag that in here and open that partially signed Bitcoin transaction. And now we'll click on broadcast transaction. And so now the new status of that transaction is unconfirmed and we can click on that new transaction, copy it, take it to the mempool. And if we look at this new transaction, the fee rate is nine sats per byte. And we should be seeing a pretty quick ETA here once this loads. So we're seeing in 11 minutes, which is consistent with what the next block here is showing us on mempool.space. And again, this is the same unconfirmed Bitcoin transaction that was sitting right there in Sparrow on our cold card. And you can see that up here when it says unconfirmed parent. So basically what we did was we had this transaction down here that was never going to arrive. The fee threshold was way too low. We could have been waiting months for this transaction to be confirmed. But what we did instead is we said that this child wallet, the cold card Mark IV, is going to pay the fee for the transaction sent by the parent wallet, the Ledger Nano X, and that those funds sent in that original transaction from the Ledger Nano X should bypass the cold card wallet completely and end up here on my iPhone wallet over in Blue Wallet. And we can already see that the transaction has been picked up in Blue Wallet with zero confirmations and ETA of 10 minutes for confirmation. And it's that same about 32,000 Satoshis that we sent originally from the Ledger Nano X. And we can see an interesting feature here on the Blue Wallet called Bump Fee. And this is saying that they can create another transaction for us that spends the original unconfirmed transaction, basically what we just did. And they're calling out that it is called child pays for parent, which is exactly what we just showed here on Sparrow Wallet. And this is one of the things that I love about using Blue Wallet for on-chain Bitcoin transactions is that it has these features built into a really great UI so that if you don't want to use something like Sparrow Wallet, you can go ahead and use Blue Wallet right here on your iOS or your Android mobile device. And it's going to allow you to reset those fees to whatever you want, whether it's a custom fee or a slow, medium, or fast based on the congestion of the mempool currently. So actually, while I was waiting for this, you could maybe hear that little sound right there. I'll keep that into the video. We actually saw these transactions get confirmed in real time. And you will have seen, you know, based on the video that I had recording right here, that they both confirmed at the same time. So this child pays for parent got confirmed and sent to the blue wallet at the same time that this transaction that we sent from the Ledger Nano X that never would have cleared got confirmed to the cold card Mark IV in the first place. So again, because the fee threshold that we sent on the child transaction was high enough, it actually allowed us to confirm that first transaction from the ledger to the cold card, even though that transaction never would have confirmed. And we can see here in real time that when I click on this transaction in the blue wallet, it's actually showing that it now already has two confirmations. So hopefully this video was helpful for you guys. The last few months have been pretty crazy with the fee threshold situation in the Bitcoin network. I personally have learned a lot about child pays for parent and fee bumping because at the very beginning of all of this crazy ordinal stuff, I actually moved off of my Casa Multisig and had to send a large amount of my Bitcoin stack to another wallet that I controlled. And I just wanted to save money on fees. And so I put a really low fee. And so it took a really, really long time for that transaction to confirm. And so if any of you are stuck in the same situation, I hope you guys can use this video and share this video with your friends to hopefully make it easier for them to understand how you can actually take control and speed up some of those transactions that you might have sent at a lower fee threshold that have maybe been stuck in the mempool for a really long time. Comment down below if this made sense or if you got stuck at any point during the video. I do still respond to all the comments. And then like the video and subscribe for new videos every Monday at 10 a.m. Eastern. I love you all. Goodbye.